Hickok 45 here, and look who joined us. You haven't seen Slamfire for a while. He came up to the table. He wanted to say hi to everybody, didn't you, buddy? He knew we were going to be shooting 22s. It wouldn't be too loud today. And he came up to see how we're doing. That's a buddy. You're a ham, aren't you? you just a ham. Yeah, good to have Slamfire out with us. And it's good to have you all. We're going to look at a couple of 22s. Some of you that can read that are not from Kentucky, up there with my relatives, know from the description that we're comparing a Colt Frontier Scout with a Ruger Single 6. And mainly because uh, uh, I happen to have both of them at the time, and neither one is mine. Believe it or not, the, you recall the uh, Scout uh, Cold Frontier Scout is borrowed from Simpson Limited. Again, we appreciate their lending that to us. And then uh, this is a buddies of mine, the single six, and they were both made in the 60s. So uh, this is 68, and I think this one may be a couple years or three before that, but the mid 60s perhaps. And uh, some, some, on some firearms, it's hard to get the exact year with the serial numbers, but that one looks like about, I think now it's been a week since I looked it up. It's, 65 I think maybe not right in there it looks like and so they're both in the same era in the same decade and uh, they're both 22 caliber and they're a couple of pretty big names aren't they Dave? uh slam fire no huh, slam fire <laughs> uh ruger and colt and uh just a quick little comparison uh, many of you may not be that familiar with uh with either one if you're not into 22 you know revolvers uh, 22 single actions, for example, but uh, these were pretty popular, and wow, this uh, single six still is. It's still in production, and uh, the new models, and uh, I don't think Colts make anything like this right now. We, we just hope Colts making anything, right? Uh, uh, they're big bore uh, single actions, uh, whatever they can get made, but because they quit making this, uh, and I think it was 85 or 86, the, uh, the Frontier Scout. Okay. So anyway, uh, I got the 22 long rifle cylinders in each one. They both came with, uh, you know, 22 Magnum cylinders. I probably won't stick those in for, for, for this. You have seen me put those in and shoot and everything. And I have the big bore counterparts to both of them. I've got the Ruger 44 or 45 here my old 45 there the black hawk made in early 70s and this is kind of a smaller version of that right and this uh, scout is a smaller version of the colt single action looked a little different a little different grip and everything but uh thought i'd bring those out there just to, to show so uh yeah so that, that's slam fire wants to walk around and check them out you want to see the cylinder slam fire no nah, he doesn't he's gonna go away that's all right uh so let's load one of them up. I'll put some ammo right here. And uh, I say th this one uh, came from Simpson and this one belongs to a buddy of mine like uh, this. So let's put some, let's just put some of these in here. One nice thing about a revolver is, uh, now watch me have misfires, <laughs> but you generally, I'll load five. I'll be good today. Just keep up the habit, even with a 22. But uh, you know, you don't have the springs to, be concerned about and uh, you know we'll see make sure this ammo is uh, the right power uh, generally speaking they will fire okay so let's fire the colt the old colt let's shoot some downy knock it downy <laughs> we knocked it downy all right that should be it we got the cowboy so yep uh I'll link to the first video with this, you know, the old action, half cock, just like the big boys in 45 or whatever, okay, that's when they made that. And then this Ruger single six, uh, pretty cool, 22, it's got a little bit better sight on it, doesn't it? Let's try it. And uh, again, it's made in the 60s, and it feels really solid, I have to say. It, it again is a half cock, uh, so you can activate the cylinder, and uh, no new action on this one because it was made before the new uh, models came out. I think it was 73 when they started putting the transfer bar on the Rugers, those kinds of things. Yeah, let's shoot this orange two liter. <laughs> well, that was, 
<laughs> considerate of him. He just turned around and begged me to shoot him again. I'm going to shoot that can. Yeah. Well, we can shoot a bowling pin. If we have another bullet, we can shoot a bowling pin. And the same thing, you know, we're going into the 60s. So, uh, you know, we just have to half cock it and then knock them out of there. It's funny, these little 22s, you gotta have it lined up, you know, with a 45, a big old case, you know, it's not hard to, to line it up. So anyway, the 60s, uh, that's when all these single actions came back into production. Talked about that before, how World War II came along and Colt quit making the Colt single action and uh, did not crank back up until the, the 50s. Yeah, the 50s. and. Uh, and guess who beat them to it? Ruger. You know, the, the movies and uh, the, the series, TV series and everything were going strong. And everybody wanted to be a cowboy, including me at that time in the early 50s. And there were no cowboy guns, no single actions like this being made. And Colt was slow. Imagine that, being slow to the market on something, not being receptive to the market. Yeah, imagine Colt ever doing that or being that way. So Ruger jumped in and they created this baby, one like this kind of, uh, they, they went through different generations and gyrations and configurations, of course, but they came out in 53. They were firstest with the mostest, so to speak. And uh, they brought out a cowboy gun. It was very well received. They were experimenting with investment cast uh, frames and you know steels and things. And, uh, and you know, this is kind of an alloy, uh, one piece uh, grip frame on this and everything. It's a 22, and even then, you know, you didn't have to have uh, the best steel and, you know, and everything. I mean, we know that, don't we? Look at a little Ruger uh, LCR or whatever. You can get by with uh, <laughs> just a few steel parts, can't you? And still have a very reliable firearm. So they needed to make it as inexpensively as possible. And uh, so they went about trying to do that and uh, they did. I think it sold for about 47.50 or something like that, and uh, and so you could be a cowboy in 53, 54. I think before many of them showed up. Well, Colt being a little slow, they saw all the sales, you know, of that, and then plus in 55 they came out with this and uh, more like this, in Blackhawk in 50 or in 357, I think was the first one in the big board. That was 1955, so they beat Colt to that as well in a big board. Uh, bringing them back, letting people be cowboys that wanted to be cowboys. And so Colt said, hey, guess what? You know, Ruger's uh, eating our lunch. People are buying these single six uh, revolvers like crazy so they can be cowboys. We can do that. And I think when the, uh, the original Rugers came out, they had a, a weird kind of a flat uh, loading gate there. So it didn't look as realistic. It didn't look like the old Peacemaker. Well, Colt came along in 57, and they offered one. You know, same thing, kind of an alloy frame. They figured out, probably looking at Ruger and what Ruger was doing, uh, that they could make one inexpensively from alloys and everything, and, and, and maybe keep a little bit truer to the uh, original Colt single action, in fact, by having a rounded uh, loading gate and kind of the original sight. You know, that looks more like the original Colt, doesn't it? You know? shown that before and uh, they did not put an adjustable sight or have a sight sticking up on it or anything okay so it really was in keeping with the uh, you know the peacemaker lines and and all that okay because this is a 45 Colt here this one's made in 56 yeah the first year uh, back for Colt with the big bore stuff 56 on that and uh, so this was 57 and so, in, uh, in all of these don't come or did not come with a, uh, another cylinder, an, an added cylinder for 22 mag, but, but some did. And, and in both of these, Colt and Ruger, there were lots of different, as I said, configurations, and some were convertible to 22 uh, Winchester Magnum, and some were not, and uh, you know, different grips, uh, different, even different alloys. I think these first came, uh, these, was it, yeah, these first came out, they had a, uh, 
kind of a two-tone. The, the grip, the frame was kind of a, a, a metal looking color and alloy and all that. So, so they've gone through different finishes and and uh, I know the Ruger has been available in so many different uh, configurations. It's still being made. There's a Ruger single six, a single eight, I think, a single 10, I think, you know, that holds 10 rounds and one holds eight and all that sort of thing. We've done a couple of them here and uh, they're just nice, nice revolvers. If you like a single action, stainless, uh, great sights and uh, just all, all kinds of things so there, there's no telling how many of those they have sold and they're still being made and sold so that's one thing in Ruger's favor it never did uh, I don't guess they ever suspended manufacture of it I, I don't know maybe but the Colt yeah that, for whatever reason uh, I guess it was 85 86 and uh, they change I know some of the newer ones are I think all steel they look more like that 45 because uh, I've come close to buying one of those before and this one's a little bit older now you might think the grip is cooler on the Colt but you know it's just plastic uh, nothing wrong with plastic but but this one is wood you know uh, so you know it depends on what the preferences are both of them are good shooters uh, both of them of course 22 not not expensive to shoot uh, at least they used to not be right when you get ammo Let's get a little out here and take a couple more shots here. We also want to... <laughs> yeah, they don't smoke too well when they're wet. Yeah. So if you want to be a cowboy, I should have worn my cowboy holster, holster shouldn't I? I could put either one of them in it. This is a holster that belongs to my buddy. Uh, he had a, I think a fellow make down there where he lives. And, uh, you know, got a nice little thing. So, yeah, nice little rig. Uh, he's like me. He's he's a cowboy at heart, and he has horses. He's a real cowboy. <laughs> he has several horses. So uh, I'm just a wannabe cowboy. And he's uh, closer to being a real cowboy, I guess you could say. So let's shoot his gun again, and uh, maybe we'll do a torture test with it. In fact, you've seen me do a Volcaro, a couple of different ones. Those were his as well. So uh, he's pretty uh, incorrigible, too. He's cowboy at heart, always will be. Like a lot of us that growed up in the 50s. And we don't apologize for it. <laughs> All right. Speaking of cowboys. Oh, I know. We haven't hit the gong yet, have we? I heard it. Yeah, man. Click. That's a nice one, I'll have to say. One of the things you've heard me complain uh, about the sights on, on Ruger's, and, and even on this one, which is my first 45 big big caliber uh, firearm of any kind, it had adjustable sights on it. And, uh, and I've never really liked that on a single action, because I don't really hunt with them or anything. Uh, I just want to be like Roy Rogers, John Wayne. And so they just always seem out of place uh, for me in that, that particular fight, even though they make it more functional. Yeah, obviously, really do. This one, I don't know, it's a little more palatable. It, it's got, it's not really an adjustable side. I guess it would slide laterally. Uh, but this is a nice compromise. I have to say, I, I, I don't think I had shot this firearm. I had not borrowed it from him. I might have fired it when he was out sometime, but I, uh, I didn't even remember it. Uh, it's it's really nice. Boy, it feels solid. It feels better than the Colt. Okay, it's got a little more weight to it. It's got a better sight on it, but yet it's not really obtrusive. It's a big, high adjustable kind of thing. And uh, again, though, this is a 60, so you, you can't find one of these every day, I guess. But it just really feels good. Uh, the grips are plenty large, and uh, it's right on. That's a very nice uh, pistol, it really is. No kidding. Not kidding. Uh, so, again, just to give you a little bit of a time frame, uh, like I say, they quit making these babies. You know, my one of my favorite firearms. Uh, you know, in uh, when World War II came along, and you know they've been making them since '73, 1873, and they suspended manufacture for a while to make military firearms. Although this was a military firearm, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, single action army. And then they were just kind of slow to pick back up again in the 50s. Ruger beat them to it. And then, of course, they've been making them ever since and still make them. 
Now, I hope they're still cranking them out there in, in, in Hartford or wherever. But, uh, so that's my first love. So anyway, in 53, 54, you know, Ruger beat them to the punch with this. And then soon after, the uh, the bigger bore in 357, the first one's in 45 and everything else. Uh, and uh, they really jumped in there. And that's, that was a, a very instrumental, I would guess, in Ruger's success, uh, catching that cowboy fever in the 50s. They already had that that popular little uh, you know the Mark series of 22 automatics out. I guess that was their was that their first uh, firearm or handgun. I guess that that was in the late 40s. I think that came out. I, I'm not I'm not sure about that one. And then you know Colt caught up and uh, got back in the game. Colts always had difficulties though, uh, well about always. But you know, as long as I've been alive, it seems like in terms of being a little bit late to the market, not being flexible and quick. Uh, to see when something they need to produce something and uh, I know in the 70s uh, 44 Magnum craze where's Colt yeah, nowhere to be seen beautiful uh, Python and other revolvers they could have chambered in 44 Magnum maybe or come up with one but it wasn't until what the 80s that the Anaconda came out after that fever has subsided so they've always been slow they've always had a lot of military contracts not to totally criticize them they've made a lot of great firearms for our military you know 1911s and the M16s and all, all those things uh, but I think it made them uh, uh, not as not as in tune with the uh, the uh, commercial market you know in this country and uh, so we've always criticized them for that, of course. But anyway, they did come out with this. It's pretty nice. Uh, if you all have either one of these, you know, chime in. I'm not an expert on either one of them. Uh, just know they kind of follow a similar format in using alloys and keeping the expenses down as, as much as possible. Colt even uh, beat them on the price when they came out with this. I think about eight bucks cheaper than the Ruger. And Ruger's famous for keeping price down. And Ruger's not, or Colt is not famous for keeping the price down are they but on, on this you know they beat ruger at least initially and they're they're both good shooters uh not any trouble with either one of these in, in my experience uh, so if you own either one uh, let us know what you think uh i know a lot of you have the uh, single six and some some generation of it uh, because it's been made so long you know since uh well 53 54 until today it's still being made so pretty cool i wouldn't mind having one actually uh was it that single 10 maybe i think we did one of those pretty neat but anyway that's a couple old uh 22s from the 1960s and thought since i had this one from simpson i knew that my buddy had one or two of these and i contacted him and uh he did he had this one from the 60s and uh so I say, hey, why don't we borrow that for a, a couple of days and uh, we'll do, you know, shoot them both in a video. Give me an excuse to shoot your gun and get it dirty so you'll have to clean it. I'll just send it back to him dirty. How's that? No, I wouldn't do that. But I appreciate y'all coming by. I didn't put in the Magnum cylinders, but uh, you know what? Can I shoot one on one more time before I let you go? Which one? You all choose. Any, 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 most slam fire left or I'll let him choose. I think I'll get to shoot this one more since it, it's uh, not going anywhere. Let me let me shoot this Colt one last time because it'll be going back to Simpson Limited. And uh, one of y'all might buy it, who knows? Like I say, they, uh, they deal in vintage firearms. And uh, they lend us a firearm if we see something that we've not reviewed, uh, not fired. We can check with them and sometimes... Just get it sent to us, lent to us. Pretty cool, huh? We appreciate their help. Yeah, I'll shoot this one more time before it goes back. We've got a two liter that needs to be shot anyway. That was an empty chamber, I knew that. What's wrong with me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, such a dramatic death. <laughs> Let's go back over to the gong. All right, that's a sweet sound to end on. So anyway, Ruger and Colt, both uh, helping all of us to become cowboys in the 50s.
and uh, both of these made in the 60s. But uh, if you ever wonder why your great grandpa and your grandpa and maybe your dad uh, acts like a cowboy and thinks he's a cowboy, and maybe your grandma too thinks she's a cowgirl, it could go back to the 1950s or 60s because we had a lot of options back then and still do to, uh, to make us uh, feel like a real cowboy. Life is good. Oh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh man. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J-O-H-N underscore H-I-C-K-O-K-4-5 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.